How social media giants turn a blind eye to Hindu nationalist hate speech. Social media giants are under fire for turning a blind eye to Hindu nationalist hate speech, allowing divisive content to spread like wire, wildfire. Kajal Shingala, a charismatic figure in the Hindu nationalist movement, skyrocketed to fame by posting inflammatory content against Muslims and the detractors of the BJP party and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. From the beginning, it was clear that Chingala was pro-BJP, pro-Modi, and pro-Hindutva while attacking critics of Prime Minister Modi and the BJP and engaging in hate speech against Muslims, Christians, and even secular Hindus who she described as a blot and curse on Hinduism. Since then, she has expanded her social media presence to other sites like YouTube and Twitter with more than 36,000 and uh, 123,000 followers respectively. But Chingala has the most presence on Facebook with more with close to 400,000 followers as of 2022. Although her accounts faced initial bans due to hate speech violations, Shingala's popularity continued to soar, even attracting attention from politicians and even including a follow on Twitter from Modi himself. As she passionately calls for economic boycotts against Muslims, critics argue that the Indian government and social media behemoths like Meta, Twitter, and YouTube must take responsibility for the unchecked rise of influencers like Shingala who fuel hatred and conspiracy theories. So I wanted to cover this because I read a very interesting and very thorough investigative piece about this female Hindu nationalist figure. And it talked, it, it profiled like over the span of four or five years, this woman's transformation into a Hindutva influencer. And it was really interesting because originally she used to just be a mom and a businesswoman. And there was this incident that happened on a campus or something that awakened her Hindu nationalism, essentially. And she used to kind of just be an influencer and just talk about her political takes and stuff. And she used to wear very Western outfits, like, you know, turtlenecks, little gold chains, like pants. Um, it, it, you know, I, I guess typical Western outfits. And now over the years, she only appears in saris and the more traditional kameez, like, and she's completely changed her image. She sometimes goes by um, the name Kajal Hindustani. Um, that's kind of one of her monikers. And she's just kind of exploded onto the scene. And she's done this kind of outside of the traditional ways that Hindutva get power within their own communities. So there are a lot of Hindutva activists who do community organizing on the ground that resent her because they say, no, she's not actually involved in doing this hard work in the real community. She just gains attention online and then can give speeches to thousands because she's garnered this influence. And it's interesting because in the article, they suspect, according to Hindutva insiders that they interviewed on the condition of anonymity, that she was arrested one time for hate speeches. And they say, they think that she was only arrested back then because she was not actually part of the real Hindutva establishment at that point. Because there are other Hindutva activists who came up in the more traditional way of doing it through Bajrang Dal, for example, and they don't face arrest because they have actually earned the credibility and support of the local authorities so that they're protected, essentially. And she didn't face that. And this article did a really good job talking about how it profiling in great detail all the ways in which she violates the terms of services for um, all of these, you know, big social media platforms. And then also talks about why these platforms are completely disincentivized towards um, actually enforcing their own policies. And this is because India is too big of a market and it's gotten to the point where they don't even enforce their policies even on English language content as much because i mean it's it's more difficult when it's in the myriad of different indian languages right but then even when this content that is so explicitly hateful that is so obviously against tos is even in english it's still not getting removed and still not facing enforcement the way that it should um so uh i, I was a really well-written piece and it brought a lot of that stuff to light so in with all that context armin what do you think of this I mean, 
we already knew how much pro how much the social media companies had to give in to the demands of bjp given that i mean we uh, given how aggressively they came after everybody um that was criticizing hinduism or doing blasphemous stuff about hinduism right so this is to be a to be expected i mean to be fair we used to be upset with social i mean i used to be upset about social media companies until i realized that they're actually under pressure themselves like their offices in india were raided by hindutva because they weren't enforcing the laws in the, the way they wanted and Not india hindutva, is a the, the offices of twitter were raided by the delhi police oh wow yeah and the bbc was also raided recently Mm -hmm. because of a documentary they made right yeah but you shouldn't and say it was in, raided by hindutva it was really raided by the police yeah okay i was corrected so yeah I thank you um <laughs> but also the um what was i saying oh also the fact that india is such a giant market and they can you kind of have to bend the knee to their laws even if we don't like the laws because it's really devastating to these giant companies to lose that market. I do think they are bluffing about cutting them complete. No, they're not bluffing. They, they, I mean, they raid their offices and stuff. So that is like very um, unsafe environments for their employees to be, if they wanted to challenge the BJP. So it's not it's not just that they are they have double standards when it comes to enforcing the community standards on pro BJP accounts and not enforcing. They also enforce their rules upon people who are not violating their community standards because they're anti-BJP. So it goes both ways. So you could be uh, calling it for genocide of Muslims, but because you're a major BJP account and it, that you're so clearly violating Facebook's or Twitter's community standards, you don't get a reaction. But at the same time, I post an image of Cali and I'm clearly not violating any of Twitter's or, or Facebook's community standards, and we lost our. I lost my Twitter account. Atheist Republic lost its Twitter uh, Twitter account, and we got strikes on Facebook. But now, at least they did something. At least I got my Twitter account back eventually when Elon came and um, Atheist Republic also came back. Uh, but both my personal face, both my personal Twitter account and Atheist Republic Twitter's account, and my personal Facebook account and Atheist Republic Facebook account is blocked in India. So if you're in India without a VPN, you can't see my Twitter account. But I have my Twitter account back, which means I didn't violate any of the terms of service on Twitter. If you live um, in India, and, you cannot even message you as a private individual on Facebook yeah. because of the blocks against not you. Yeah, not just the Atheist Republic Facebook account. Me, my individual personal account, somebody from India cannot even message me. I have been blacklisted in India. And my account has not been removed, which means that Facebook recognizes that I didn't violate any Facebook, any of Facebook community standards. But because of India's court system's request, India's court system had filed something against me, which forced Facebook to block me in India. You can't access me in India. I am invisible in India. You have to use a V. By the way, guys, NordVPN, we have a link. We have an affiliate link to NordVPN in the description. If you don't have a VPN and you would like to see my Twitter account and my Facebook account, you could use a VPN. You use the affiliate link in the description. And yeah, given that India is becoming more and more like Pakistan and now even like Iran because of all these. Uh, the fact that you have to use VPNs there to be able to see things that the BGP doesn't want you to see. Um, now more than ever, more Indians need to get VPNs. Use our affiliate link for NordVPN to so also support us in return. But yeah, this is bizarre. This is yeah, uh, I, I, this is getting worse. It's getting, it's constantly getting worse. I don't know where this is going to go. But at some point, it's. I think Facebook and Twitter and YouTube they need to. It's going to explode at some point. They're going to be called out for being mm. for they're going to have blood on their hand. Like they're going to be it's going to I mean, be it's going Facebook to be Facebook already has blood on their hands. It's called the Rohingya genocide. Yes, it's going to be so easily demonstrable how if at some point a genocide happens in India that Twitter and Facebook were complicit and they knew it and they had the data to know that they were doing something that they were responsible for this and they didn't do anything about it so this is going to be very dangerous like i'm 
you know, I mean, we're trying to highlight how much Facebook and Twitter are one-sided about this. They remove us for blaspheming Hinduism, and they don't remove people that are actively calling for genocide of people because they're part of the. We call out BGP, we get removed, but BGP uh, BGP accounts don't get removed, even though they're asking for things that are not just be not just against um, community standards of Facebook, but against international law, against Indian law and international law. Yeah, so I it, think there are human rights violations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and they they say it, they know it's true because they talk about it in their own transparency reports. <laughs> um, I, I think there was an incident recently where Elon Musk was confronted about his hypocrisy on the Indian issue. And basically, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he with in not so many words, he basically said it's just too hard to have free speech in India. Like he just kind of gave up. And so I actually want to do a full news segment about that probably next week because it deserves its own highlighting because this guy that's supposed to be so free speech and like a promoter of these values is patently on his face just saying, "Mm, no, this is something that basically like white people get because it's just too hard to enforce it over there. It's disgusting. So I'm going to put that on the list to talk about next week. Okay, that's good. That we can. Exactly. He pretty much said that India is too difficult to handle. We can't mess with them. So he's just going to like, yeah, ho- just visibly hold a double standard. It's bigotry of low expectations in a way. Um, yeah. Good comment from D. She's saying so many people got accounts deactivated simply for sharing memes, including me. So allowing this hate speech is absurd. She added, Facebook also acts as atheist groups with no warning and without explanation. It's it's systematic because I talk with other administrators about this, right? It's a systematic issue that we face. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.